Good morning, everyone. Just wanted to remind everyone the school has started back up again. So please uh, make sure you're real careful out on the roads that you're looking out for kids, uh, especially going through the school crosswalks and uh, that you slow it down to 15 miles per hour and that we're uh, watching out for our kids. Let's be safe. It's a good day for us, the first day of school, so we got a lot of officers out here and we're going to be out here today just to show everyone that they need to slow down, pay attention because our future generations out here are protecting us. This is where our fire department, all the stations around this uh, city, all the firefighters in service go out to the various uh, intersections near schools in their uh, respective districts. And we, we're out here to remind people, we have signs, remind people that school is back in session. Summer's over, it's time to slow back down at the school zones, at the crosswalks, and make sure that our kids get the school safe. So we're here for the ice bucket ice challenge bucket. and I'm here with my deputy mayor. I was challenged uh, for this ice bucket challenge by Congresswoman Kathy Castor and this is all about raising awareness for ALS which is really a debilitating disease and uh, so anything we can do to raise awareness we're certainly willing to do it. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, I know the deputy mayor is going to talk about who challenged her but I'm going to issue a challenge uh, to each and every member of the St. Petersburg City Council <laughs> to take the ice bucket challenge and, and bring awareness to ALS and I'm uh, pleased to have our colleagues from Water Resources who are about ready to nice. keep that was on us. So, Deputy Mayor, go ahead. And... Well, I was challenged by a woman, Elizabeth Skidmore, who I thought was my friend. Um, <laughs> So, but, but anything for a good cause. And my challenge would be just to the people of St. Petersburg to join in supporting this cause and all of those things that shape the future of our city. All right, are we ready? And ready. Kevin King, and Kevin King got challenged. <laughs> we got a bucket for you, baby. Okay, you ready? ready? One, two, three. Here today at Fossil Park for the city's annual dog swim event, which uh, kind of ends the summertime and opens our pool up to all our four-legged friends. And we like to think of ourselves as being a dog-friendly city uh, and uh, also friendly to those who are the owners of these dogs. But we love this event. It's been going on since uh, 2004. It's one of the most popular things that we do and uh, just an awful lot of fun. And it's another great reason why the sun shines here on us in St. Petersburg. <laughs> Back over a 
over 10 years ago when Mayor Kreisman was on our city council, he brought forward an idea, a suggestion he had seen somewhere to um, open swimming pools for a dog swim like this. So I am really proud to say that we were the first city anywhere in the area to do this. Um, other cities are doing it now. But um, it was an idea that he actually brought forward and we've been doing it now for, oh my goodness, well over 10 years, heading into maybe 15 years. The owners of the dogs really enjoy bringing their dogs out to this event. It's a great time for the dogs to interact and have social hour with other dogs. They love to go in the pool and jump off the diving boards. We built a couple of ramps for the dogs and the dogs get to climb out on their own and we let them go over in the little kiddie pool. It's about two and a half feet deep. The dogs really enjoy it. Um, we come early in the morning so it's still cool out and uh, they have a great time every year. <laughs> We come out every year to help the dogs and help all the charities that come out here for the SPCA as well as uh, supporting the Parks Department also with the dogs and to give them a great day out here at the park. It's been I think about three or four years running now that we've come out and it's just a great experience for everybody. We have a lot of community dog people so you know you'll see hundreds of dogs here in the course of the two days so it's really awesome and people love it. We wait all year for it. celebrate this wonderful occasion. It's a two-fold occasion, as you know. It's Job Corps' 50th anniversary, his birthday. And as the banner says, Job Corps works millions strong. We've produced millions of graduates in the 50 years, getting stronger and better, and what better way to celebrate that occasion than to have a graduation celebrating our graduates we have before us. So family, friends, visitors, special guests, I appreciate you so much for taking time to be here. Uh, this is, a, to me, a really moving occasion. Uh, twice a year we do these graduations. It's even more special today, so thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, for, thank you all for having me here today. You know, at City Hall, we like to say that the sun shines here, even on days like today. And certainly the sun is shining on each of you here today. I want to first say congratulations to each of you. Uh, this is a remarkable milestone, not just for the Job Corps program at 50 years, but for each of you for your own unique journey. Many of you may not know this, but the Job Corps program, the national program, was modeled on something creating, created during the Great Depression, the Civilian Conservation Corps. The CCC, as it was called, helped many young men with room, board, and employment. It saved thousands of American families in one of the worst moments in American history. But for as good as those things were, it did, it did even more than that. The CCC helped build the America that we know today. The men of the CCC built more than 125,000 miles of roads that we drive on today. They built more than 45,000 bridges across America. They built 3,000 lookout fire towers. And though few of us use these wires anymore, they strung around 89,000 miles of telephone wires across our nation. Hard to believe in this day of cell phones. They spent more than 8 million hours fighting fires, and they planted more than 3 billion trees. 
The Civilian Conservation Corps was discontinued after World War II, but today's Job Corps was built on many of the same ideals. And it's interesting that the National Job Corps website of today talks about this program as an educational program. And with today's commencement, we can all agree that that's what it surely is. But like the CCC, I think Job Corps is more than that too. And I believe that each of you are here today to help to rebuild the America of tomorrow. And for those of you in the construction trades and healthcare trades, tomorrow is today, as there are contractors who are desperate for skilled employees, and, and the healthcare industry is one of our primary job targets here in St. Petersburg. Yes, there is an edu educational crisis in America, but your presence here today answers a different calling the need for communities just like ours to come together and rebuild after the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. You have come to the Job Corps program to better yourselves. And today is affirmation that you have. And you have my warmest congratulations on your achievement. So now I challenge you, take the skills that you have learned here and let's work together to build our shared future. I want to thank you all for having me here again today on this special day. I want to wish you congratulations and best wishes for the future. And I have a proclamation I'd like to read. This is a proclamation from the city of St. Petersburg. And it reads, whereas since its inception in 1964 under the Economic Opportunity Act, Job Corps has served more than two million young people. And whereas there are 125 centers in 48 states, the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico. And whereas in the past five years, there is nearly 82% of Job Corps graduates that were placed in careers, advanced education programs, or the military. And whereas Job Corps is the largest career technical training and education program for low-income students ages 16 through 24. And whereas in the state of Florida, the Job Corps program supports five centers, Pinellas County, Jacksonville, Miami, Gainesville, and Homestead. And whereas in the state of Florida, an average of 2,700 students are served annually. And whereas the Pinellas County Job Corps Center, which opened in August of 2010, has served over 1,000 students. And whereas Pinellas County Job Corps Center has created many partnerships with local organizations, neighborhood associations, agencies, businesses, faith-based groups, nonprofit organizations, and schools. And whereas Pinellas County Job Corps Center has benefited from our business community, being involved with our students through training and work-based learning. And whereas, in addition, Pinellas County Job Corps Center offers students and staff who are involved in community service and have put in over 5,000 hours every year they have been, that they have been opened. Now, therefore, I, Rick Christman, Mayor of the City of St. Petersburg, do hereby proclaim August 27, 22nd, 2014, Job Corps Day in St. Petersburg, and I urge the residents to recognize the Pinellas County Center for their outstanding service in improving the lives of youth. Congratulations again. Little did each one of you know that when you first walked on to Pinellas County Job Corps Center, this is how our staff views you in your cap and gown. Okay. Our dream for each one of you that comes on our center is to be successful. That's why we're here. That's why we love our job. Job Corps graduate is ready to continue your success in college, military, or a career in healthcare or construction. That's why Job Corps works, because each one of you took a risk and showed up at Job Corps. Today you get to walk off, make us proud, be able to support yourself and your family, and just have a blessed life. This is our privilege to have our seventh graduating class. 
The amazing thing is somebody had the vision for this very thing of graduates sitting in Pinellas County from a Job Corps Center. He was a very dear friend of ours, but he had an amazing vision. He worked 10 years and eight months to bring this center to Pinellas County, and that was Congressman Young. We're very thankful that he had the vision. The thing that blows my mind is we've already done 50 years of Job Corps. I'm not a betting person, but there will be people standing here 50 years from now, and there will still be this legacy of, legacy of Congressman Young having graduates come through the Pinellas County Job Corps Center. We will never forget him. We will continue to tell the story. At this time, I would like you to give a Pinellas County Job Corps welcome to his son, Bill Young. Hoop it up. You can do better than that. Doing okay? Okay. In grateful appreciation to Congressman Young's family, Pinellas County Job Corps Center thanks you for sharing him with us. We are Congressman Young's Job Corps Center. I just wanted to first of all say thank you so much for this award uh, recognition. My, my father was so proud of this center, not just of the fact of what was done here, but the fact that this center is creating young men and women who are ready to go into the community and have jobs that not only keep our community running, but keep our economy going in the right direction. He would be thrilled to be here to receive this award, and I wish he was here to accept this award as well, but I'm proud to do it on his behalf, and I promise you that Congressman Jolly, who he and I have been here before with my dad, will continue to support you guys in the same way that my dad did. Thank you very much for this and good luck in your new careers. Hello graduates, faculty and friends. Class of 2014, this is an important day for us. It's a day to apply our success, reflect on our accomplishments, and think about our future. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating the graduating class of 2014. Look how far we have come in this walk of life. Growing up as children may not have been easy for you, nor for me. There were things in my life I wasn't proud of. I began to ask myself, why me? But I know other situations were a lot worse than my own, so I have nothing to complain about. Raised in a home with three sisters and me as the only boy, my mother's prayer was to see her children graduate before she passed away. After graduating high school, I didn't know what to do with myself. During that time, I was working two jobs and taking care of my nieces and nephew. Three years later, after my mother was diagnosed with cancer, a part of me was broken. I didn't know how to put the pieces back together. Losing a mother is a horrible experience to live with. I'm sorry. It's something you never get over because you want your mother cheering you on for moments like this. I know some of you that are sitting here today can relate to me. You may have had someone close to your heart that you wish could come back. Let me encourage you. Goodbyes are not forever. They are not the end. It simply means you will miss them until you meet again. In spite of my problems and situations, as Booker T. Washington would say, still I rise. I didn't allow my personal problems to serve as excuses because I understood each problem has a solution. 
That solution lies within me, my faith in God, and my ability to overcome any obstacle I face. My past experience has led me to this center, and it has taught me the meaning of success. One of my favorite quotes by Albert Caesar, it says, success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. If you love what you are doing, you will be successful. Good morning, I guess I should say. Good morning. Good morning. And not only does it always feel like morning at Job Corps graduation, but it feels like Sunday. I almost felt like saying, let the church say amen. I know I'm not supposed to say that. But Brother Raymond, that was a testimony. And I, I'm liking the bow tie, too. And Maya and Vernicia, somebody needed to shut y'all down because I saw some hands waving in the back there. If y'all had gone one more time, we might have had a situation in here. But on half of the, behalf of the Board of County Commissioners, I just want to thank the Job Corps staff. I want to thank Larry for your leadership, Anita, um, all the families of the graduates who have supported these young people. I want to thank y'all. Give them some love. And most importantly, I want to uh, say congratulations to the graduates. Y'all look younger every time I come here. I guess I'm getting older. <laughs> but, you know, you all are not our future. Y'all are our present. And a lot is depending on you. And we know that you have uh, everything you need to be successful. Uh, and like Raymond said, there is a plan for your life. Uh, there is a work for you to do. And I would just ask as you go forward and you be successful, first I would have, hope that you come back to beautiful Pinellas County and beautiful District 7, right, Newt? <laughs> and live here and help our community move forward. But I would always ask you when you are successful to reach back and help somebody else. That's the only thing I would ask today. Is that all right? <laughs> now, I have a proclamation as well from the Board of County Commissioners. I will not read the whole thing. Is that okay? Uh, it reads just like the mayor's and just like news. So I just go to the bottom line is signed by all the Pinellas County Commissioners and it recognizes today as National Job Corps Day in Pinellas County. And I also very quickly have two letters to read from you. One is from our Congresswoman Kathy Castor, and she has some staff here today. I want to read this quickly. It says, Dear friends, it is with pleasure that I extend greetings to Pinellas County Job Corps' 50th anniversary. For the past 50 years, Job Corps has been providing no-cost education and career technical training programs to young people aged 16 through 24. They work to improve the quality of their lives through vocational and academic training. Job Corps does not only provide hands-on education, but also the resources to apply the knowledge and skill that our young adults have learned. The additional confidence and professional growth that our young adults attain will help provide them with a bright and successful future that will continue to make our community flourish. On behalf of the constituents of the 14th Congressional District of Florida, I extend best wishes for today's event and many years to come. That's from our Congresswoman Kathy Castor. And the next letter I have and the last one says, Dear graduates, congratulations. As you gather for today's graduation ceremony, I want to take a moment to thank, thank everyone involved with Pinellas County Job Corps for their exemplary public service. Today's event is extra special as we're here to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Job Corps. Through education and career training, Job Corps has helped provide a better future for so many youth in Florida and across the country. So again, to all the graduates of Pinellas County Job Corps Class of 2014, y'all can make some noise there. That's y'all. Congratulations. You've worked hard to get here, and you should be proud of what you have accomplished. Best of luck in all of your future endeavors. Have a wonderful ceremony, and keep up the great work. And that is from our U.S. Senator Bill Nelson. We are, we are so proud of you. We're looking forward to your success. Uh, I'm glad that we recognize Congressman Bill Young, who worked so hard to make this happen, along with Goliath Davis from the city of St. Pete, and Commissioner Bob Stewart, who led this effort working with Anita. And I'm very happy to see Congressman Jolly here today uh, as well, because it's important when folks are talking about what they're going to cut in Washington that we have folks that actually been here and seen what Job Corps means and what it produces for our community. 
community. So this is an important day. Thank you for your leadership, Congressman Jolly. We're looking forward to your success. Thank you all. Well, thank you, folks. I appreciate it. And there is some personal history for me uh, right now because Mr. Young was somebody I considered family. And this was a place that was near and dear to his heart. And if I can have a small piece in carrying on his legacy and contribution to Job Corps, you have my commitment to do that. Uh, I just got elected. I'm a first-time candidate. I'm, I'm about to confess a whole bunch of stuff to y'all today, so I hope that's okay. I, I'm a first-time candidate. And so I some days wasn't quite sure what I was doing. And my cousin, who is in the business, said to me, you know what you need to do? You need to smile more. And I said, well, that doesn't come naturally to me. <laughs> Folks, I got to tell you, I have smiled more in the last hour than I think I smiled in the last year. This, this is a cool day. And if I have my way, between Bernicia and Maya, we're going to have a sing-off here to do another round of Eyes on the Sparrow and the National Anthem when we conclude this. Listen, I, uh, trust me when I say this, I am, I am so very proud of each and every one of you. I mean that. This is a special day. You all have made a commitment that reflects your personal responsibility, your personal medal, your commitment to doing good and doing right and furthering yourself. I am proud of each of you. But my question for you is, are you proud? Yes. Are you? So let's hear it. Come on. <laughs> Good. I think everybody's clapped for everybody else. Y'all have clapped for everybody else except for yourself. So I want to make sure you got to clap for yourself here. Listen, I, I was just elected in March. And so I've started a new job as well. Not too different from you all. In fact, the only thing different is that when you step out this door and start your next chapter of your career, your new job, I promise you, you're going to have higher approval ratings than any member of Congress ever will. <laughs> So keep that up, and here's how you keep it up. From the day you step out there, you are going to make an impression on those you work with, but you're also going to make an impression and a commitment to each of yourself. You're going to build a reputation by your actions in the workplace and in the community. You already have done that. Think about what brought you here today. Think about the personal commitment that brought you here to this moment, what it took to get to this moment. That is the commitment that you are going to carry on throughout your career and create a life for you and your family and your friends that will be yours, that you own, that reflects the dignity with which you approach every chapter in your life as represented by today.